Welcome to the Aero General Service Channel. I'm your host, Corey Bartolotti. And in today's video, we're gonna be assessing some drain lines around a condo community. And we're going to see the function of them and how well they are performing and which ones are gonna to need to be maintenanced and cleaned out. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now what you are looking at here is an eight inch PVC SDR 35 riser that comes up from the main line, which is also eight inch PVC SDR. Now this particular riser has been fitted with a niloplast adapter, so it can accept a metal grate to allow surface water to enter the system. Now this riser has also been spliced into on the left and the right. So we have two laterals, which are four inch corrugated lines, and they connect two gutter downspouts from either a building into this riser. This eight inch main line connects into the nearest storm drain that is on the side of the road. The water then travels through a large main line culvert pipe to the retention pond where it discharges. And as you can see, all the water is flowing nicely through these lines, so there are no issues here. Now watch as I pull this grate off of this four inch corrugated pipe. Look how much water was being held back by that grate. All a grate does on the end of a straight pipe discharge like this is just hold the flow of water back and could potentially create a bad clog at the end. Now, I understand why people put these grates on the end of a drainage line. They wanna keep frogs and squirrels and snakes and stuff like that out of the line. But I'm here to tell you these drainage lines, they do not connect to your indoor plumbing. So even if a creature was to go in there, it can't enter the interior of the home. It's still gonna stay on the exterior. And I can assure you that on the first heavy rain, whatever's living in there is gonna get flushed out. Now, as you may have already been able to tell, these are just simple gutter downspout drains that allow the water to be moved an additional six to eight feet away from the building's foundation and so that the water isn't pooling up on residents' porches. Now, they're all straight pipe discharged out of this retaining wall, and this particular one has a lot of debris and pine needles around the discharge end. So this needs to be dug out and then this line thoroughly flushed to ensure that it's functioning properly. Take a look at this gutter downspout. This is a perfect example of what you do not want to happen. The water is literally going around this drainage line and down into the foundation of this building. There's a ton of debris that has gathered here and has popped the corrugated adapter off of the downspout. This is completely clogged full. Now on the other end, the discharge end is buried where you can barely see the top of the discharge pipe. This needs to be dug out and this line flushed thoroughly and cleaned out and that adapter needs to be secured back on the gutter downspout. Between a different set of buildings, we have another SDR 35 eight inch main line with a riser and a niloplast adapter to accept the metal grate. Now we're gonna go ahead and pop this and we're gonna run our camera snake down this main line because we wanna take a look and see what's going on here. The reason for this is because as we look down here, we can see debris in the line and there actually is no water flowing. And there should be some water flowing in this one because it is actually raining the whole time we have been out here. So we're going to run our camera inspection snake and we're going to try to figure out what's going on in this main line. As we make our way down this eight inch main line, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of trash in here. There's bottles, there's styrofoam, there's golf balls. Everything that ends up on the roadway or in the gutters, it ends up in the storm drains. And remember, it travels through these lines and it ends up in retention ponds, in natural areas. You know, it gets into the environment. So try to be mindful of your trash. The other thing this can do is obviously it can cause clogs. Now, as we make our way down this line, the SDR pipe, it looks pretty good. There's no obvious cracks anywhere. It doesn't seem to be any bellies in the pipe. You know, there's no root intrusion. So the one thing that concerns me is the amount of dirt and mud that I see at the bottom of this pipe. Now, this dirt and mud is getting into this system somehow. And I do not think it is getting in from any of the drain basins because there is sod, there's grass around them. So that tells me that this dirt and mud is getting in from either a cracked line 
or a broken storm drain box. And the reason I think it is coming from one of the concrete boxes is because in general, this SDR line looks good. And I know that this SDR line runs to one of the storm drain boxes. Now, when we get done snaking this particular line, we are going to open the storm drain box that it connects to. And you will be able to see that there is a lot of water being held in this particular storm drain box. Looking down into this storm drain box, you can see how dark the water is. This is due to, like I said, there's mud and dirt getting in the system somehow. Now, the box in general looks to be pretty good. There's no cracks in the concrete. There's no holes. So I don't believe it's the box that's the problem. I think it is one of the two culvert main lines that has either a crack in it or where the two culvert pipes are pushed together, that seam is starting to open up and that is what is allowing the dirt and sediment to get into the system. Now, the only way to figure this out is to investigate it further and try to find out where this dirt and mud is entering the system at. I hope you enjoyed this video and you gained some knowledge from watching it. And we really appreciate everybody's support. It really means a lot to us. And until next time, this is Aero General Services signing off.